All right, hey everyone. Um, welcome to the stream. Uh, I haven't done one of these for a while, so really looking forward to uh, to doing this. Um, so yeah, basically what we're going to do over the next few weeks is um, create kind of like a little sci-fi interior um, using a mix of like 2D, um, 2D kind of work in Photoshop and also uh, Blender. So doing a mix of 3D and, and 2D. Um, this is kind of an, uh, an example of the type of thing that we're going to be doing. Probably not this elaborate, but um, and sort of focusing it a bit more just on a certain area. But something that kind of looks like this, and um, hopefully I can go through um, step by step to show you the process um, and, and do this over the next few weeks or whatever. So yeah, really um, looking forward to doing this. So I hope it's going to be cool. Um, let me just fix up my Wacom tablet here just for one second. Okay, we should be good. So, um, let's, uh, so some other things I've kind of got is, uh, kind of what we're going to be doing is I started a little demo in class um, and I thought uh, what could be cool is, um, is um, kind of um, taking the design in class and kind of fleshing that a little bit further. So I basically promised the students that I was going to do this. <laughs> so I thought, why not? Let's do it in the stream. Um, so basically we kind of got this world where we've got this uh, Mars Corp company and there's this like cryo storage um, crates that we kind of designed up, which are these stackable crates um, that are meant to be pretty heavy and carried by forklifts and things like that. So basically what we're gonna do is like design a room um, that's like the entrance to the warehouse of where these kind of crates could go. Um, so I've kind of like prepared some stuff earlier um, and this is a task that I set for students to do, which is to design kind of a, a corridor entrance um, just using only flat shapes because I really want um, people when they're starting out to focus on the design and not the drawing. They're kind of like, when you're starting out, they're two sort of separate things. You know, like you can draw things in perspective, but that's a challenge in itself. And then drawing things in perspective and designing at the same time is really difficult. So um, with this exercise, I like to just kind of be like, okay, everyone, just like flatten these things out. Just think of it on like one flat wall and then just focus on the design. So don't worry about all these kind of fluoro shapes and things, right? The, that's just me setting this up to like kind of color this up, right? Um, but the, the main sort of part of this is kind of the line work. Now I can, there's some little tricks that I can show you guys today, um, which are um, just some, let's not do it in that one. Let's just do a new, a new piece of paper. Um, we just want an A41, all right? Um, and there's a few little tricks you can do in Photoshop, which are, which is awesome for doing this. So um, the first thing is I just use like a really uh, plain old boring, you know, brush, whatever sort of the default uh, hard round brush brush is in Photoshop. Just seeing if we've got, this will do. So we've got the hard round brush, right? So it's just this, <laughs> it's the most basic brush you can get. And I want to make sure, I even want to make sure like, Everything's turned off, all the shape dynamics and transfer and color dynamics, all that was all turned off, right? Um, the reason for that is because when I'm kind of designing some of these elements out, I like to just hold, um, sorry, I gotta turn all this stuff off. Otherwise I'm gonna start yelling at the computer screen really quickly. Sorry, I should have done this before guys. <laughs> Oops. Uh, let's turn all of these off. Elevator music. <laughs> uh, turn all this off. I like putting my hand and my arm on the Wacom tablet, and all this stuff really bugs me. 
it just gets in my way so i turn it off and i just use the keyboard for all of my things i'm old but you know whatever and then i gotta turn it off in ooh, in photoshop and other Oh, it's still doing things. <laughs> Stop it. Any touches turned on. Okay. Cool. All right. That's better. Oh, let's redo. Okay. So the reason why I have the brush set up so simply is so basically I can click and shift, hold shift and click again. And then I can draw a straight line, which is really cool. So I can then draw whatever straight line I want holding um, shift and just clicking. If you have a brush that has sort of like pen pressure like this, you'll do that. So you'll click and then hold shift and click. And it does this where it kind of goes like thick to thin. And like sometimes it will work and sometimes it won't work depending on the brush, right? So I just like to have this really simple brush because remember, I'm not kind of like drawing this as such. I'm more kind of like just designing. So I'm just playing around with uh, with shapes, right? So the other thing that I like to do is when I'm sort of setting this up, right? Is like, let's just do like a little, oops. Let's just do like a little doorway or something, right? Really quickly. So what you can do here is we can, in the brush, we can turn this symmetry on and we can click vertical and go, okay. And we can move that wherever we want to, which is really cool. And then what I can do is like, if I draw stuff, it'll do it symmetrical. Yay, it's pretty cool. And you can do all sorts of different ones, right? Like, yeah, you can you can do this stuff, all right? And then it's doing, you know, all of this business. So yeah, it's very cool, all right? So I like using that quite a lot. So um, if I'm kind of like designing out this door or whatever, I've normally, oops, I've normally got some, some reference up here and I'm just kind of thinking about, you know, like what kind of shape this could be. Um, no. Uh, and let's let me give it some, something here. Oh, how do I turn all this off? <laughs> oh my God. Use sticky keys. No. Yeah. No. No. Okay, hopefully that works. Okay, so um, forgot what I was saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically like just holding shift and clicking, trying to, you know, get some kind of like shapes happening here and just thinking about the, the design of this. There's some parts here I might not like and we can just erase bits out. And a lot of times what I find is like when I'm when I'm doing this, I will tend to like kind of overcomplicate it at the start. And so I actually spend um, quite a bit of time just like simplifying it, right? As I'll kind of go through, but you can see like, you know how this is working. So yeah, we could have, oh, have some, let's not do it like that. Have some door bits door here and then you know we could add in like a control panel so we could turn like symmetry off you know and then we could add in and I'm not gonna I'm not using this one I'll, I'll go with the other one that we've already done but then could add in sort of like control panels and do, you know, kind of all sorts of stuff, right? So I can have symmetry on and I can have symmetry off and I can just start, you know, working out a bit of a design. So if we come back to this one that I've like, you know, spent a little bit more time on, um, that's all I'm doing. So I've just, I've just used a symmetry tool. Like I use the symmetry tool here, right? I, I used it here for this element. I used it for this element and not for these ones, right? Um, 
But I think with this one, I used the symmetry tool and I did it, you know, kind of along here. So it was flipping it this way and that way, right? So it was really cool. And what it means is it just takes half the time to, to draw all of this stuff, which is really cool, okay? Then the next thing that I really focus on is um, some design stuff, all right? So, and this is the types of things that we'll talk about during classes, right? At CW Studios, which is we kind of go into a lot of this stuff and I'm going to go into in depth, but I'm... I go into it in depth in the classes, but not going to go into it in depth here, right? Because <laughs> we're just going to kind of build this out. So, but one of the main principles we're really looking at is like big, medium, and small, you know, one, two, three, and primary, secondary, tertiary. They kind of all mean the same thing in a different type of way, right? But they're really important in terms of like, you know, how you design stuff and how you kind of grasp some of these concepts. So, um, a lot of things that we that I that I'll talk to the students about is you know designing a big shape, a medium shape, and a small shape. Having big lines, small lines, tertiary lines, right? So or primary, secondary, tertiary. You know, one, two, three. So having these big lines that are a one, small lines that are two, really small lines that are a three, right? So you can see how it all kind of ties together. So there's big, medium, small, one, two, three, primary, secondary, tertiary. And this takes a lot of practice, all right? It takes a lot of practice to then, you know, make all these kind of components all fit together. But the other thing you can really do is like, have a look at reference, you know, go onto Pinterest, type in sci-fi corridors, sci-fi doors. There's, there's so much stuff, you know, that's around and, and you know, look at those things and, and copy them and practice them and just build in a visual language, right? So that's what you want to kind of do is like over time you can build up your visual language so that then when you try and draw all this stuff up quickly, it just starts to come a little bit more naturally. So um, uh, yeah, so if you have any questions at all, um, just let me know and I'm more than happy to stop and answer things and, and, and do stuff like that. So um, yeah, but just kind of wanted to show this um, process really quickly and and just have this here that you know this is the thing that i've done and then we're going to kind of go into blender and sort of build that up so here's like another previous uh previous one from another another class here hang on we can actually let me just load up some of these uh got that one there Where put that? all right so we've got oops let's not load it up like that <laughs> uh how do we just open with photos that'll do all right so we got something like this like this one um just spend a bit more time on it's a bit neater and tidier and this one's from ages ago you know like what's that seven years <laughs> it's too old <laughs> all right um really old but it's the same sort of thing and then i just went through with values um, and just kind of tidy things up and adding in little decals and details and really playing playing around with all those shapes and design elements, like pretty fun. Um, and then another one I've got, like I've got these with sort of done, done with kind of different techniques. Um, <laughs> hey Josh, how you going? Um, so then we've got stuff like this uh, where, you know, this, this one's like the same thing, but just uh starting with a different base so i think with this one i may have started with like some lego pieces and then um and then just built it up from there like kind of to help the color and and some of the forms and things but once again just keeping this flat so it's just like a design exercise it's not really a drawing or a painting exercise it's more about like design and shape and how all these um, bits and pieces kind of like fit together and you know there's bits where i sort of like use symmetry and bits where i don't use symmetry um but it's just trying to keep it relatively simple even though this looks really complicated it's still trying to keep it simple kind of in my you know in my feeble little brain <laughs> all right and uh and then we've got the stuff where yeah this is another like really old one where um uh this was i think i actually started this in sketchup like it had a kind of 3d base um and you know it was really kind of focusing on this doorway and things like that never quite it's sort of not entirely finished or whatever but um and i think one thing i was looking at the other day i think a lot of these control panels are a bit high in relation to how tall someone is and stuff so i'm you know i'm always trying to work on improving those elements and yeah, really trying to get things to look as functional as possible and and um yeah but also like having this kind of whimsical you know sort of almost 
fantasy sci-fi nature to it which is cool and I, I like doing logo bits and little design elements and decals and things that I find all that stuff like pretty fun um, and I think yeah so it was those, those sort of three right in terms of what we're doing what we're doing today um, so yeah that sort of gives you an idea of like where you can go right so you can take it from your little line work right little line work like this um to this and then you know potentially to this right um but we'll see how we go like i said probably not going to get this extreme but yeah it's more we're going to create more of like a corridor right so what i've got is um um i've got a little pure reference board up so um maybe ray if you could uh type in the chat the, the link to pure ref which is um really awesome so it's a, a free program that you can get where you can kind of sort out all your references and things which is very very cool so um i've, I've got my references um which is basically this um sitting up on the other screen so that um so that i can start kind of building a scene um from that so yeah let's kind of load these things up and and start doing some stuff hey <laughs> all right so i'm gonna um load up blender and once again uh blender is a free program so you can just download that at blender.org which is super cool i literally just downloaded it five minutes ago on this computer because i didn't have it on this computer so <laughs> that's all you all you do so this is like fresh vanilla you know just it's just how it comes out the box right and i'll set a few things up and i'll run i'll kind of run uh through all of the things that i'm doing right and kind of let's hopefully get get this um get this piece happening from start to finish all right we'll see we'll see okay um i'm gonna do a few little things i'm just trying to think what's the best way of showing you actually we'll, we'll save that bit for later um let's start out by just making um a plane here so i'm just going to go shift a shift a make stuff in blender all right i'm not going to run through every shortcut because i've got lots of other um tutorials of how to do that right so um uh we'll, I'll, I'll kind of talk but i'll just talk through the shortcuts as i'm going but i won't go really slow like there's some classes at cdw where i'll take it nice and slow go really simply so that everyone can kind of know how to um, do this right but if you're just tuning in <laughs> um maybe as well ray you could link in the uh the blender donut tutorial series because like that's how i learned to do blender i just watched andrew's um donut series and and it's super easy and i have my 12 year old daughter has done that and my 15 year old son has also done that and they both know how to use blender <laughs> right so it's yeah it's super cool so yeah the blender donut <laughs> it's really great all right so um <clears throat> so let's start out we want to make a corridor so when you're kind of doing stuff in 3d there's a couple of things one is um i find that when i'm designing in there things can get overwhelming right so i like to kind of um when i get to a certain point i like to kind of split my assets out and just do them individually and then kind of like copy and paste them back into the scene and i feel like that helps me design rather than just moving stuff around in 3d which can yeah be a bit tricky and the other thing is we really need to when you're in 3d you want to kind of come up with a game plan so it is a bit hard when you're starting out right but let me kind of show you what i mean hopefully so <clears throat> we're going to do this interior space so i need to like start blocking out the space all right so let's have a look at how we do that first um so i'm just going to grab this cube and um and let's kind of scale it and just sort all this out and I did get this to a certain part point in class, so I'm kind of redoing some things, but I might, I'm gonna rejig some stuff around so we can kind of have some fun, all right? Um, all right, so let's just get some walls. Shift D, Shift D will duplicate things, all right? And because we're gonna do an interior space, we're actually gonna instance a lot of stuff, so we're gonna do a lot of Alt D, not Shift D. <laughs> All right, and I've got to remember. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, because we can kind of make one thing and then repeat it around a lot, but I'll show you how to do that. So if we go to like the top mode, all right, we hit R, then 90, that'll rotate at 90 degrees. We're gonna hit G and just move this down here. All right, like I said, I'm gonna go pretty quick, but um, there's plenty of other slower stuff um, online that you can get that tells you the buttons of what to click. Um, 
believe me, I <laughs> I needed help with those two. <laughs> Alright. So we're just getting a roof on here. Alright. Now with this roof, I'm I am gonna do some other stuff, but let's not stress about that just yet. Alright. <clears throat> what I might do for this corridor is we want to have maybe play around with the space a little bit to make it fun. So let's go shift E escape. Grab another of these boxes. All right, move that in here. Let's just scale it. And I think that it'd be cool to have like some stairs or something like sort of a, a secondary kind of area in here. Uh, and I'm not, maybe there's like a little gap down the side or something. Let's sort of try and get that in the middle there. And this is actually when kind of uh, a lot of the kind of thinking process is happening just we in terms of designing this layout and what's sort of happening all right so what's i think this is pretty cool we'll just start with this kind of pretty simply okay let's really early on let's get a camera in here and sometimes this is a bit tricky and i found this you know slightly difficult at the start with working out how to control all of this so if we click on the camera here okay it's basically just going to snap to like where my camera is just in some random spot here right um and you gotta like move around you're like what the heck's going on like oh god like i click on the camera and then as soon as i try to move it it's like not working like what's happening okay so you need to hit n on your keyboard and then n on your keyboard brings up these little toolbars all right and then we've got item tool view and then the view we have a camera to view right so we need to lock that I do that. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So we need to lock the camera to view, all right? And then when I zoom out, middle mouse wheel is zooming out. Then it's actually moving my camera around. Yay! Which is awesome, all right? So now we can actually kind of see what the camera's, you know, kind of looking at, right? And we can move it around and we can start to start to set some of this stuff up. Okay, so I'm thinking that we're going to sort of be in here somewhere, right? Um, our focus is probably going to be like on the door, like I'm thinking in terms of like my kind of composition in 3D, that the, the doorway is going to be kind of the hero point of this doorway, control panels, all that kind of area. Um, and uh, so I'm thinking about, you know, kind of where that sits in space. And do you know what? I might even just... Um, once, once you've kind of got this where you roughly want it, then just toggle off camera to view, right? And then if we want to move around, it'll just let you move around again, okay? You can also hit the camera little button and they'll go back to your camera view. You turn it off and they'll just toggle back to perspective view, which is really cool. All right, so let's just really quickly, let's get, just go Shift D, Escape, okay? And let's do another one of these for my door. All right, and we can kind of like do all sorts of shortcuts for moving around, do all sorts of things like this. And there's a million one plugins, blah, 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 blah for Blender, all right? But I just want to keep this like sort of pretty um, like sort of vanilla, right? So that it's just it's just the really basic way of doing things so that you don't have to go and buy plugins and, um, you know, know what shortcuts I'm pressing all the time. I'm trying to, yes, I know this is the slow way of doing it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to make it simple, right? Uh, oops, that's not what I want to do. I'll do this one. Is that... Right. Just sort of making sure that's in the center. We're going to have this door here, and it's a bit more like this kind of size. Maybe. And then I'm thinking about like how big that is in relation to the stairs and the floor and the space that we've kind of got going on here. So I might just want this a little bit bigger. Okay, something like that anyway. We're really rough, right? So we're just thinking about just thinking about this, trying to get that composition. Okay. Now it's kind of hard to get a nice composition with this camera because this camera is kind of pretty boring. All right. So the camera at the moment, if I click on camera here in my kind of layers, so just think of this as like Photoshop layers, really easy. You've got all this stuff, it's all in different layers. We can group things and all that kind of stuff as well. So one of the things I like to do pretty early is right click on all of this stuff and just do a new collection. Oh, just pop that in the collection. All right, and let's call this, um, you know, interior. 
All right, and sometimes what I'll do is um, is even have like a, a um a collection for like the camera and the lights and all those things but we'll see how we go right but what's really cool about that is just like in photoshop you can hide these like kind of groups and then your layer stack is not too out of control right so yeah it's really cool just works so, so the same way to photoshop if i make anything inside this group here um like if i duplicate things or i make a new cube it'll go in that collection all right it's exactly the same as Photoshop groups, just works kind of the same way. So yeah, it's pre pretty cool. Uh, you can also toggle things on and off, like right, in terms of viewing them on and off, right? This is what's gonna render, we won't touch that. And we've got a whole bunch of other little options we can do up here and all sorts. But anyway, let's not worry about that just yet. <laughs> all right, um, so let's get back to the camera. Okay, so at the moment, the camera, we're gonna click on the camera, okay? Camera's kind of boring. So let's come down here uh actually you know what we should do this as well first let's um have you guys ever done this in like 3d land all right and after a while things disappear all right so what we need to do here is we need to hit in the here and on the keyboard that brings up these toolbars in view we want to change the uh end clip plane we just want to add a few zeros right and basically that'll all come back all right so that's just your uh, uh clip end plane basically so it's just the camera is just clipping stuff off that's too far too far away okay so what we need to do is we come down here into the camera and we want to do that in here as well so we want to have this end and give it a few zeros right and then we're not going to run into that problem let's go back to the camera so i'm just clicking the little camera icon let's kind of zoom in here so we can see what we're doing and then let's make it a bit more of a fancy camera so at the moment it's like really kind of boring 50 millimeter lens camera right if we make it 100 millimeter that's going to make it even more boring that's going to kind of flatten everything out it's going to flatten the the perspective out so um what we want to do is we want to actually make that like a, a smaller focal length so let's make it like 30 30 is pretty cool and you can see when we do like 30 some of these angles and stuff get to be like a little bit more exciting right now if we make this uh 10 whoa <laughs> we start getting like all this distortion right and you know if we make it three all right oh it's just gonna get crazy so i think somewhere between 20 and 30 is good so let's maybe go like 25 and you can see there we we get some whoops <laughs> all right lock camera to view we get some nice distortion we get some nice angles kind of going on and we can kind of play around with the composition a bit there which is really good so let's kind of zoom in to our to our space here and just very very briefly try and just get a bit of a composition happening okay one of the things i'm doing all right so with composition i'm thinking about see see this side this shape it's kind of really easy to tell right see this shape over here this is a smaller shape than this shape over this side you know we have a bit less room here and a bit more room there okay if we make those even then the composition can kind of get a little bit boring i also know that if i sort of move this over i move this just keep moving over a bit if if i can get this uh this focal point kind of off the direct center it's going to be a bit more interesting too and we start kind of moving into some of this rule of third territory right and we won't go too much into that composition and i think the, the compositional rules are a bit more like they're guides they're not rules they're just they're, they're guides right and say like the rule of thirds that's a really good one that that does a few things it keeps us away from the center and it keeps us away from the edges right keeps us kind of putting things on the edges and in the middle and and when we're avoiding the edges we're kind of avoiding tangents right which is really good so and i know a lot of people that like are getting uh, that do a bit more like a 3d heavy duty 3d work you know one of the things i always find they have a bit of a hard time um, developing in their work is that kind of compositional feel and also that storytelling feel right so i think a lot of the storytelling comes from the composition that you're choosing so some of that stuff's really important now the other thing that i'm thinking about is like i want to show the floor here i, I could do stuff like this and, and we could make some things a bit more dramatic or whatever we, we could do some of that but i think that um oops <laughs> so I'll do that all right i think that i would like to kind of show some of the top of this uh of this kind of um ground plane here right that's something that i kind of want to do all right so let's say like yeah we're, we're gonna go with something like that right for now so i think that's pretty cool so once i'm kind of set on something i i like 
uncheck the camera to view, right? And then I can kind of zoom in, right? And have my camera sort of like almost full screen. I find that kind of, you know, pretty pleasant to work with. I can hit N here and that toolbar will disappear, okay? All right, if anyone's like newbie to Blender, some other things, here's some stuff to really try and avoid, right? <laughs> if you hit spacebar in Blender, I always hit spacebar because I'm used to like panning around with space in Photoshop. So I just always hit spacebar. And then I like want to move this thing, right? And I'm like, oh, but my rotate gizmo is not popping up and this is not popping up. Well, it's because you're playing an animation at the moment because <laughs> you hit space on, on the keyboard. So if I hit space, all right, and we can clip this back to the, the first frame, all right, to see how now I can move this around. My, my gizmos kind of came back, all right? The other way that these kind of disappear sometimes is if you click up here, <laughs> that'll like make these things disappear and that'll make your gizmos disappear. So if things disappear on you, it's normally either you hit spacebar or you clicked on these ones. All right. So there, there are a couple of things that you got to kind of look out for. Okay. Now, now I've been jibber jabbering on. What am I, what was I talking about? What was I actually going to do? <laughs> all right. What I was going to do was I was going to muck around with this uh, roof. All right. So. Let's play around with this roof here just a little bit. So what I want to do is, hmm, maybe I should explain this first as to why. Let's explain that because this will make a bit more sense. All right. So let's make some of this a bit pretty, right? Just just a, a little bit. Um, uh, find a good way to explain this. All right. So if we come over here to the little TV box, the render properties. All right. I've just got this in Eevee, that's awesome. I'm gonna change the viewport to like 128. That just means it's gonna kind of like take a bit longer to render it, but it will look better when it does. So it's all good. Um, Ambient occlusion, we're gonna turn this on, right? And we're gonna set this distance to like 500 meters, right? So it's really cool. Now, nothing changed, okay? So what we need to do is up here on the right-hand side, we've got like this solid mode, you know, viewport shading mode. We've got a, a viewport shading mode here. All right, we'll click on that. And we've also got kind of the uh, the rendered um, viewport, right? So this is really cool. So if I turn ambient occlusion off, that's how it kind of looked like in the rendered viewport. But as soon as we turn ambient occlusion on, and I think it's set to 0 0.1, it looks like that. And you're like, oh, that doesn't really do much, but change that to 500 and away we go. We're like cooking with gas now. It's like starting to look like something decent in 3D, right? So pretty cool. The next one we want to do is we want to, add, we want to check screen space reflections. All right, so screen space reflections will basically um, mean that it kind of adds in uh, bounce light, right? Um, which is really cool and will make things feel realistic. And shadows, uh, I am on this computer may not kind of handle stuff. So let's just put them on like 2K shadows, all right? And um, that's pretty good for now. We're all good. We're not, we're not crashing. <laughs> I tried to open up this other scene before to show you guys and it crashed. So I was like, let's not do that. Um, Okay, so now let's, once again, because I'm more of like a concept artist, I like things to look pretty. <laughs> I'm like, I want, the, I want it to look awesome from the start, right? So let's just do that. What we're going to do is we're going to add in like a, now, once again, we're in Blender. There's a million ways to do these things, but this is the way I'm going to do it because it means you don't have to have plugins or anything, and I can show you how to make all this stuff look cool. So we're going to light this with like a HDRI. So what I want to do is I want to go to the shader editor. So all I did was I just dragged this up. All right, and then we go to the, the shader editor here. And once we're in the shader editor, you can see these like nodes pop up. Okay, if ever they disappear, just go uh, view and frame all. All right, and they'll just they'll just pop up. Sometimes they disappear. I know lots of students have come to me like, where are my nodes gone, Simon? <laughs> and I'm like, they're over here. Okay, so um, we're on an object. So we're talking about this material here, but we don't want to do that. We want to go to the world. So we're going to go to the world and we want to kind of mess around with this. Now, I want to, I want to um, enable an add-on called the Node Wrangler, okay? So we come up here, we go Edit, Preferences. Now, remember I said I just installed this version of Blender, right? So it's got nothing on here yet. So we've got to kind of uh, turn all these things on. So I go to Add-ons and we're going to type in Wrangler. And, and this is an add-on that's just in here. You just have to turn it on. So here we go, Node Wrangler, and we just turn that on there. All right, we wait a second, it will turn on, okay? Then we can close that down, that'll save automatically because Blender's amazing and whenever it crashes, it auto saves and all this kind of stuff. Very cool. All right, so now when I first came in here, these are both selected, but I just want to select one, the background, all right? Then we're going to hit Control T, all right? 
and everything should go pink and just don't stress <laughs> that's what you want okay so we want everything to go pink here and then what i'm going to do is we're just going to bring up our old friend uh, google all right and i'm going to go over here and we're going to type in uh, hdri haven all right that one and it's changed names to polyhaven.com and we're going to go here and we're going to go to assets and we're going to go to hdris so yeah maybe ray if you just want to like put that in the chat as well that would be cool and then um you can click on any of these right um it, it doesn't really matter for what i'm doing at the moment so dry hayfield that sounds great let's just click on that one and then we're just going to go download and it's literally just going to download uh uh, HDRI to your computer straight away. Awesome. You don't have to sign in or do anything. It's very cool. All right. Um, if you're using this all the time, maybe you should sign up and <laughs> and give the uh, whoever some some uh, money for, for this. Um, we're going to go back to um, Blender. And um, then with this these nodes that just came in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Open. All right, and I'm going to go to my downloads folder, simple as that, and we go to that EXR file that we just downloaded, and voila, we're going to plug it in, and we've got a HDRI in the scene. How awesome is that? Pretty cool, right? So now what's going to happen is this HDRI is going to light the whole scene, right? Um, now, so I do have a light in here. Let's just turn that off for a second, all right, just so it doesn't do any funky stuff. Now, with this interior scene, the HDRI is not actually going to do that much lighting because we're going to kind of light it artificially ourselves, right? But anyway, whatever. This just makes me feel better because it looks like something cool. So um, what you can also do is um, when we come in here, uh, you can rotate. So I think it's along the Z. Yes. All right, so if we zoom out a bit rotate along the z and basically that is lighting the scene yep so it's it's pretty subtle in this but yeah you can basically kind of work out you know which side's your light side which side side is your shadow side and things like that right so let's sort of have it somewhere around there and like i said it doesn't matter too much for this it's just giving me a bit of lighting information okay let's um we're kind of not going to keep all this, but let's make this all like shiny metal, right? Because once again, we just want to make it look awesome from the start. So we, we feel like we're heading in a good direction right from 10 minutes into what we're doing, okay? So let's come here, over here, to this little like radioactive symbol, <laughs> all right? It's the, it's the materials tab, all right? And basically, uh, we're just going to assign a new material to this, all right, which is this one here. And let's make this sort of like a gray, Right, and it's going to change all of these because they're all kind of this uh, material already. All right, and I'll show you how to kind of deal with that after. Um, let's make it like more metallic. Let's make it more spec. Let's turn the roughness down. And oh, yes, we start getting amazing shiny metal, right? Which is really cool. Probably ridiculous for our scene, but let's go with it. <laughs> all right, so. Um, once again, I'm just going to show you how to do this. So this one doesn't have any material on it at all at the moment. So we click new material. We're just in this tab, new material. All right. And then let's make this one like a sort of a brown or something. Maybe sort of like matches the ground a bit there. All right. Let's sort of do it like that. And then let's make this a bit more metallic with a bit more spec and a bit less roughness. Not down to zero because otherwise we make water. All right. Can you guys see that? When it's completely shiny, it's basically water. So we want to just... Just tone that back a bit. It doesn't matter because these are just like place. These are just totally placeholder at the moment. Okay, now, do you remember how I said we we're going to kind of like put a bit of a hole in our roof? So at the moment, when we kind of go in here, the only light that's really happening is coming from out here from our HDRI. Okay, so we're kind of just going to light a lot of this artificial, artificially, like I said. So if we sort of go to the camera, you can see what we're dealing with there. So it's pretty dark and stuff. But let's sort of muck around with this. So with this roof, Let's do this. All right, let's go Shift D, Escape, and add another one over here. So that's kind of cool. We could just overhang it a tiny bit, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is like, I kind of don't want to just see the sky through this. Hmm, maybe I do. Uh, uh, no, I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. Let's, let's see anyway. I'm gonna go Shift D, Escape, and add like another sort of roof piece that's sort of like up here or something. And we could add like bars and columns and, you know, other bits and pieces or whatever, whatever we want to do, all right? So I'm just making sure that we kind of like can't see through this in the camera. Yep, 
Yeah, that's cool. Okay, something like that. All right, awesome. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do, we're going to turn our light back on. All right, so you can see where this is kind of heading at the moment. And our light is probably almost kind of in the right spot. So I'm going to move. Woo, not that. I'm going to click on the light. Where's the light? Okay, here. So it's not the right spot. We're going to move that over here. And I should probably... Oh, no, we'll do it like that anyway. So as I do that, look at that. Now we've got... So if we move it over, no light. You know, as we bring it in, light. <laughs> All right, pretty cool. And then we could even sort of change some angles. Oh, what do we want to do? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I'm just sort of seeing where that is. All right, cool. And then, so I'm just trying to play around with like some nice little shapes here, which is which is cool. And then what we might want to do is we go to the light. All right, so we're in the light. We select the light, and then down here you'll get this green. So if you're on the camera, this one will turn to the camera. If you're on the light, this one will turn to the light. And then let's add like another zero here. There we go. And that's gonna like start lighting up the whole scene. You know, we go crazy, so we could add another zero and it's going to get out of control, so we don't want to do that. But yeah, so we want to have it something like that, okay? And then what we might do here as well is we might just add another light. Oops. And we're going to go Shift D and just make a duplicate of that light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it like into the scene, right? So it's like in here and that's going to kind of go crazy because it's really bright, <laughs> all right? Uh, let's maybe move off to that direction but then what i can do is like let's maybe make this one just like 500 watt all right and then it's see how it's just illuminating in here a little bit more right so maybe we make this one you know like we've got to kind of play with this like 200 or whatever just something but just so we're getting like a little bit more kind of light in here we can muck around with these and make them more um uh kind of like believable as we kind of go through but that's kind of like a good little start right so we've got shiny materials and yeah, so on and so forth. I might make some of these like a bit less shiny. <laughs> All right, just for now, just so we're, and let's maybe change this one. So what happens is when you have like a bunch of these um, materials that are all the same, um, we want to, they all kind of like link together. So what we want to do is we want to unlink these materials. And at the moment, if you go on the material tab, you can see there's a number eight next to this. So we're going to click this and we're going to turn that off. So now this door one is not linked to that material anymore. So basically what we can do is we can come to the base color. We can just change that around. We can make it darker or lighter or whatever you want to do, right? Um, and then, yeah, we're starting to um, just, yeah, starting to quickly sort of build this thing up. But mostly what I've been doing so far is just thinking about sort of the general layout. I'm going to do something here. Let's um, shift D, escape, duplicate this one. I'm going to go S for scale and make it a bit bigger like that. So it goes into those walls. And then I'm actually going to do the scale down here. So then we've got kind of like a separate little plane thing, not plane sort of, you know, another box down here, right? Which is pretty cool. Okay. Let's do some stairs like really quick. All right. So what I'm going to do here is like, let's go um, shift D escape. Let's scale this down way down because we're going to make some stairs and we need to really focus on like kind of scale and stuff when we do this too. So it's going to do a bit of this, do a bit of that, you know. Just think about how big this step is in relation to the door right and sometimes it's a bit hard to see so i might like kind of move that back and just be like oh okay yep that's pretty cool i think that's pretty good and then we're just gonna have this step here i'm gonna move that down a tiny bit just so we've got like a step off the platform there um and we might we're gonna do some other stuff in a minute as well uh but some stairs all right so what we're gonna do there's a nice little easy way to do this we're gonna add like a little modifier so this is your first foray into the modifiers if you're new to Blender. So we're going to click on this little, uh, you know, spanner wrench tab, all right, modify properties. So we're going to click on this and we're going to do an array, all right? Now, when we do an array, what they did is just put another cube just back there, all right? So then we kind of got all these little 
um, all these little, uh, you know, settings here that we can kind of play with. So um, let's like make the factor minus one. All right. And now that's actually coming out the other side. All right. And then let's do the Y as like one. All right. Oh, oh, that's going the wrong way. You can kind of see what I'm going to do here. So let's do the, let's do the Z at one. And it's like, oh, mm, our stairs are going in the wrong direction. So let's go minus one. Oh, right. And then, you know, we've got some stairs. <laughs> so let's make it like minus uh, eight. Nope. Minus. Minus 0 0.8. Better. All right. Just yeah. And then let's make this minus 0 0.8 as well. All right. I'm just trying to kick it in a little bit. So you can play around with these settings to your heart's content. And then what we can do is let's zoom out and make the magic happen. So then we're just going to play with this count. Bloop, and let's make some stairs. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now stairs are going down there. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. All right. You can sort that out. So it's just creating an instance of each one of those and um, you make stairs. So there you go. You make stairs in three seconds. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, and you can do all sorts of stuff in Blender using these like modified tabs, which is, uh, which is really cool. Um, all right. So what do we want to do next? Let's make a column. All right. Let's make one of our, you know, kind of sci-fi columns. So um, what do I want to do? I should pay attention to the things that I drew <laughs> a bit more and let's do that. So let's come over here. All right. Uh, can you see this little gizmo thing over here? All right. That's where things are kind of going to generate from. So if I go shift right click and put it over here, right. And then go shift a mesh cube. My cube will be made over there. How cool is that? So you can just shift right click anywhere. Yep. And, it, and then it will just make things from that point. Right. So we come over here and I'm going to do this, something like that. And we're going to do this, something like that. And like I said, I should pay a bit of attention here to what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is, all right, this is good too. This is a bit like Photoshop. So I hit um, hide, H, H for hide. All right, and I can hide that. Actually, it's nothing like Photoshop. <laughs> you can't hide stuff in Photoshop. You can tell it's basically what it's doing is just turning the layer on and off. Um, yeah, and then, okay, that's cool. So now we can kind of see what I'm doing. How big are these? Let's make it a little bit smaller. Just trying to think about the scale here. All right, something like that. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm just trying to think how I want to do this. Actually, for this, I might even just leave it like that for now. What I'm going to do here is like, I'm going to tab into this. Okay. So I haven't showed you guys that yet. So at the moment we're in object mode. If I hit tab, it goes into edit mode. All right. Basically in edit mode is where I can, you know, like do kind of um, modeling, right? So if I click on one of these, you know, vertices and then move that around, you know, I can just, I can make whatever shape I want if I know how to do those things, All right? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go um, Shift A. Actually, let's not do that. Let's go Shift right click. All right, around here. Let's go Shift A. Uh, let's make another cube. All right, let's go S. Move this down here. All right, move this down. I'm just going to put it, put it in here. That's actually pretty close to where I wanted that to go. All right. Then I'm going to move it up here. And, oh, actually, you know what? Let's just make it in the middle there somewhere. And then scale it. Scale. Here we go. Here we go. And let's move this down here. I'll explain the reason as to why I'm sort of making it inside this other shape in a minute. All right. That's pretty cool. Okay. So let's tab out. So now I've got this shape sort of thick, you know, rectangle and a, and a thin one, right? Because we're going to start working on these kind of pillars. Okay. So now what I can do is, this is kind of really cool. So I'm going to move this one up over here. 
All right, so this can be my original one. And like in my space, I wanted to have like a bunch of these kind of columns. So instead of going Shift D, which is duplicate, which I use all the time, I'm going to go Alt D, Alt D, and then I'm going to hit Escape. And that is also going to make a duplicate of this, but it's going to be an instance, which is really cool. And I'm going to go Alt D and just do that again. And then Alt D, Escape and just do that again. All right, and I can even go to the side view if I want to and just sort of make sure that there is ways to kind of make sure these are all even, but we you know, we don't really need to worry about that for just yet. Then I'm going to grab all of these. And we hid stuff by hitting H to bring stuff back. Alt H. All right, and that'll bring everything back. So hide, Alt H, bring it all back. Okay. So then I'm going to select these guys, select, select, and I'm going to go Alt H, oh, sorry, Alt H. <laughs> I'm going to do uh, Alt D, escape, and then we're going to move these across over to this side. All right, something like that. And you can see how quickly these this, this stuff starts coming together. But I, I will really preface by like you want to just try and really work out your space first. Try and have some of your designs down, down in Photoshop and then really think about the overall space. Don't kind of get too into the details really quickly because that's when everything's going to kind of like end in disaster. All right. So now we've got this is pretty cool. So what I want to do is like we're just going to edit this. We're going to do something in here. And if I do something, let's just, it doesn't matter what it is, right? But let's just do this and click on that and go I and inset this and extrude something stupid out <laughs> like that, all right? Now, can you see that that's doing it to all of those bits on this side and that side? But we've got a bit of a problem over here, right? So these ones, so I'm going to tab out. These ones are facing the wrong direction, okay? It did it. They're just the wrong way around. So we're going to grab these and we're going to mirror them. So let's go control M and then hit X to mirror them along the X, right? And then we're going to move them in and just make sure they're kind of sticking out the same amount. Cool. Very cool. All right. But see how basically that little, that change I made on that one pillar then changed on all of them. So that's really cool because if you've got lots of repeating shapes, you can do instances and then one, it's like kind of uh, saves your computer a bit, uses less memory. Um, and two, you only have to model one <laughs> and then it's all kind of done. So yeah, that's awesome. So uh, let's just undo all that <laughs> that I just did because we don't want that. And let's go back here and select all these <laughs> uh, and go control M X. All right. And then they're, they're flipped around. All right. So there we go. So we're starting to get that. And then what else do we want to have? We're going to have like a kind of another, we get a shift D escape. This is going to be like some sort of like control panel area, screens and stuff. All right, and how is that going to go? I'm not sure yet, but we're probably going to move that in a bit. Maybe across here, but anyway, we'll, we'll work this out. And what else? We're going to have some, we're going to have some of these like D shape elements here. So I'm just trying to work out a good way to do those. We might even do it a bit of a, bit of a uh, naughty way. Um, but we'll see. I'm just trying to think about what would be the best thing to work on first. Um, let's maybe start working on the door, right? Just trying to get some of these shapes and things. Now, once again, there's like heaps of different ways that we could kind of do it. Um, yeah, lots of different ways that we get the shape, but I'm just going to kind of, we'll do like a little sort of, you know, um, just a really old school kind of modeling <laughs> way of sort of getting some of these shapes. So let's just do that. All right. So I'm looking at my reference of what I drew before, okay, which is this all right so i'm looking at that and just trying to think about like how i'm gonna sort of achieve some of those shapes right so um let's just add in to this so we go into edit mode 
let's kind of make sure we're on the front mode we're going to also turn on x-ray which basically means that you can see through the shape so if i hit one on my keyboard and i select uh, this vertex here it's selecting it at the back of the cube as well or the the, the rectangle um yeah so what do we want to do let's have a look let's make an edge loop so i hit Control r Control r will make edge loops and then if we go to the side it will make a horizontal one if we go to the top it'll make a vertical one all right and we can just kind of move this over here i reckon somewhere we go Control r we're gonna have one over this side as well And we could do, you know, as I think about this, we could do sort of mirroring techniques and all sorts, but we'll just, we're just going to do it like this for now. So control R, let's do one of these. Just going to put this in here. All right, and let's see how we start going. So I'm going to hit one on the keyboard, which is the vertex. Number two is the edge. Number three is the face. All right. So I'm going to go on vertex. I'm going to select both of those and we're going to use our scale tools and we're just going to boop, 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 boop. start scaling all right we might grab this one you can kind of move all of these down remember we've got x-ray mode on so we can kind of yeah sort of muck around with some of this stuff which is really cool um let's do like one more control r i'm gonna have one like here and let's grab yeah all of those vertexes there and just extrude them out a bit mm. maybe maybe not maybe not maybe i might have some of those pieces do something else let's undo that one Pro r let's add one down in here control r let's add one more okay and then oops we grab those hang on let's see what that did all right grab those and those and scale that in cool and that's giving us this shape and i just make sure this is all like kind of going flat that i haven't accidentally you know transformed any of these vertices around the place that in the wrong kind of axis so yep that's all looking cool all right what else do we want to do I think that's pretty good for now. I think that's all I want to do for this. All right. I'm going to, um, then what I want to do is I want to like bevel some of this. So we want to hit number two on the keyboard. We're going to sort of, then we can select edges. I'm going to hold alt on the edge there and they'll kind of select, um, like all of that edge there. Then I go alt shift. Oops. Let's start, but start key alt shift. Now I'll select all of that one alt shift. That'll select all of that one. All right. And then we want to go. Oh, come on. We want to go Alt, Alt, Shift. And we're going to select that one. Alt, Shift. We're going to select that one. And we also want to do these one on the side. Alt, Shift. Oh, not that. We're just going to undo that. We're just going to go Shift. We just want to select that one. That one maybe not the one down the bottom because that might cause a bit of trouble this one and that one and then what i'm going to do is let's go turn x-ray mode off all right let's go Control b for bevel and then we can drag this out and we can like bevel those edges yeah which is super cool right if i want to add more segments to the bevel i hit s while i'm still beveling right so i'm still beveling i hit s and then that'll add more segments so we can make it like a kind of smoother curve, right? If that's sort of what you want to do. But I want this to look kind of faceted. So I'm just going to have it like there. We're going to leave it there. All right. And then we're starting to get a bit of a bevel to that edge. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. So I want to add some little bits that are kind of like sitting over this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to shift right click. That'll add my little origin point there control uh, sorry shift a mesh cube all right another cube it's like scale this does not need to be that wide all right so but i want this to kind of stick out like a bit of a bulkhead here 
So we're going to move this. We're going to go to the front view here. I'm going to move this up to there. And do a bit of that. Move it. Just need to make sure it goes over those edges. So it's like kind of there. Just move it a little bit more. Let's scale it a tiny bit more this way. All right, cool. So just trying to get that right shape there. Okay, and then once again, I'm going to kind of edit this one. So I'm just going to um, add into this. All right, uh, hit one on my keyboard. And what do we want to do? We want to add in some edge loops again. And we're going to do some extrusions. So I'm going to go Control R. Oh, hey, Josh, how's it going? I'm going good. How are you? I'm going to go Control R. All right. Add one over here. And I'm just looking at the reference. What else do I want to do? That'll do just for a second. Then we're just going to grab this one. I'm going to make sure X-ray mode is turned on again. I'm going to grab that one. I'm going to grab that one. Scale those. So we get like this corner bit going on. I might even scale all this. All right. That's pretty cool. And then, <laughs> hey Jaden, how you going? Uh, going good. We're doing some sci-fi interiors. Very exciting. <laughs> All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, turn X-ray mode off. I'm going to hit three on my keyboard. I'm going to select that one. Select that one. I'm going to hit E for extrude. Then we can extrude out shape. So basically, like using those little tools there is like we can pretty much do anything you want, right? You can model any shape you want, but pretty close to it, just from having the, using the vertexes, you know, face, edge, vertex, all right? Um, and then extruding things, very cool. So yeah, we're just trying to get this like bulkhead area working. Um, all right, what I might do in here is like, I just want some really specific shapes. So I'm just gonna hit number two on my keyboard. I'm gonna select that one. I'm gonna select that one, hold down shift. I'm gonna go control B. All right, and I wanna like, I wanna add a little bit of that bevel just on that edge there. And what I might do is go back down to the, go to the front mode. So just click Y there. Um, let's go one, let's make sure X-ray mode's on. And then I'm just gonna grab that and that and just move this down a bit. All right, just so I'm getting this right shape here. All right, cool. And then let's go this one, this one here, that one and an X-ray mode off so we don't select something at the back by accident. So that, what does that do? Selecting that? No, hang it. What have I done? All right, this one. Hold down shift. Why are we not selecting stuff? What do I do? Oh, I need an edge. What am I doing? <laughs> Try to select vertices. All right. That one. And that one. And control B. And the same sort of thing. All right. So we've got that. And then I just want to go back to the front mode and change this angle here. Let's hit number one. Grab that one. And grab that one. Kind of move this up a bit. Oop. We didn't do x-ray mode. So that one. And... That one. All right, and then we can sort of muck around with that. Um, too many questions. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I'm not hosting a holiday workshop in October. That's going to be Steve. Um, so Steve works at a VFX company, um, and um, and yeah he's um he's really cool so he's gonna do some some really cool 3d stuff as well all right uh yes and now what i'm gonna do is i am going to uh see see jaden you're late to the party i told everyone we're not doing hot keys and all that kind of stuff we're just keeping it very vanilla so everyone knows what i'm doing sometimes i hate it when i watch people and they're like pressing keys on the keyboard and then all of a sudden i'm like don't know what anyone's pressing <laughs> so yes i wouldn't do that when i'm doing it for myself i would use hot keys but i'm not doing that so you can see what i'm doing <laughs> all right very good 
Um, but all you guys are professionals, so, you know, bad luck. <laughs> all right, so we're just going to grab this one and this one and uh, drop this down a bit and kind of do a bit of this and a bit of that. Mm. Yeah, and I think this one. Sorry, I'm just trying to get these shapes working a little bit better. down sorry go quiet when I'm trying to think about it all right and I think what I want to do is want to grab hit number two on the keyboard right which is the edge that one and that one and see if we can control B and like bevel that Okay, I'm gonna go back to the front. Seat so number one, grab that one and that one and move that down. Make it better. Let's maybe grab this and this. There's always the bit that sort of takes a bit of time. Just trying to get these shape working. And sometimes I find, find like I'll get a bit sort of complicated with that at the start and have to kind of tone it down a little bit. But yeah, that's looking pretty cool. I am just gonna, um, let's go number three, all right? Turn the X-ray off and go L and select all of this and go Control B and like bevel everything. And uh, Nah, like I didn't think that was gonna work, but we'll just we'll just try anyway. But no. <laughs> um, cool. So I'm just gonna move this back in. Move this back in, and what I might also do maybe so we can get like some other angles going on here is let me try this. Let's hide that. Let's hide this roof. All right, let's grab this part, tab in, just select the top. Maybe these ones as well. Select those three, those um, those faces, and then go S, and kind of scale this in. Right, and that's actually going to give us this this more of an it's hard to see more of an angle on this side here, right? But then what I'm going to do is like move this back out. Oops, not like that. Move the whole thing. Tab out move all of this back out a bit so we're getting some of that sort of like slightly more interesting angle there all right so it's cool so now we've got sort of like this this um you know piece that sits over our, our kind of doorway here all right and then let's maybe work on this door right so let's tap back in and i'll show you how you can do some some maybe questionable things <laughs> using some knife cuts and stuff let's see here so let's go back to the front mode all right let's go control r let's put one down the middle all right so put an edge loop down the down the middle and then i'm going to go control r and wherever i can get them not using the knife tool <laughs> and then what do we want to do we want to do one here so somewhere here, all right. And then I'm gonna hit K on the keyboard and we can basically like add cuts in here, which is good and bad, all right. So we're gonna do that one there, just go enter. And then we're gonna go K and do one here and go enter. All right, and then what I'm gonna do, let's go control R Add another little edge loop in here. Which is cool. And control R and add another one in here. I'm actually not worried about this other stuff. Oh, actually, that's sort of getting a bit. Let's not do it like that. Uh, what do I do? Let's go control R. 
Maybe split that up there. That's cool. And then control R. Uh, Mm, okay, or undo. Got that down there. Got that down there. Okay, we'll just do it like this. All right. So now what I want to do is hit number three on the keyboard and select these these faces here. All right. And what I'm going to do is just hit E, and instead of going out like that, we go push it in. Right, like that. So we're going to try and make this sort of like entrance into the door, and you could you know. Just work out how far we want to push that back. So that's pretty cool. And then I'm going to go S while I've still got this selected. Let's go S. And this is going to give it like a bit of an angle in, right? And it actually gives it like this little ramp up here, which is kind of cool as well. I sort of quite like that. So um, so that's cool. Then we can click off this. And we go tab out. And now we're starting to get there with our little like door section, right? Which is pretty cool. So um, then what we could do is like, Yep, make a little door. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to shift right click here, shift A, mesh, cube, S. All right, let's make our door. All right, we're going to push that in, move it over here. Make sure we've got enough wiggle room. I'm going to go Shift D, Shift D, Escape, and just move one over this side and just make sure that they're relatively close to the middle. I think it's pretty good. It's like it goes a teeny tiny bit that way. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right, and then just see like how far in that needs to go. So just I just want this just sitting outside of there a little bit. So now we've got a little door here as well, which is that's that's pretty cool. And then we can kind of keep working on you know the details and the shapes and everything they kind of want to do. So um, what else? I've got like another piece that kind of sits outside of that. So I might kind of do that as well. So shift right click on here, uh, shift A, mesh, cube, S. All right, let's move that down. Let's go to the front mode here and try and just work out the shape that I want for this piece. All right, so we want it like this. We want it kind of sitting on the outside edge of that bit. Just make that a little bit bigger up there. All right, and let's just tab into this. Uh, Control R, and I want two edge loops kind of down the middle. So now what I do is I use the mouse wheel, right, and scroll, and that'll make two or four or stacks of them if you keep scrolling the mouse wheel, <laughs> and then unscroll <laughs> to, to get them back to two or one, whatever you want, okay? So we got two here, so let's do that, and then we just click. All right, and let's just do one on the key. Actually, you know what? Let's put an edge loop across here as well. All right, so we want to have this one. We're going to move that one. No, yeah, <laughs> probably x ray mode. All right, select that one. Yeah, let's select that one. Let's go there. This one goes kind of here. Let's move this across that way all right let's go control r another edge loop in here let's move that across no let's maybe go control r add another one in here select these four potentially move that across yeah cool Move this across. All right, let's have a look at that shape there. Cool. Yep. All right, let's tab into this. Uh, hit three. 
L, control B, and light bevel. Oh, we get a bit of sort of tearing there. Look at that. All right, and then we're just going to move this back in here. All right, pretty cool. Now what I'm gonna do with this one is, cause we're probably gonna mess around with this somewhat. Let's go Alt D, Alt D, Escape. All right, and I'm basically gonna move this over the other side. So let's go Control M for mirror, then hit X, all right, on the keyboard, and then click, and then we have a mirrored version of that. So then we can come back to the front mode and just make sure we're lining these up. Pretty good. All right. Yeah, and anytime you want, you can kind of come back to your camera and see how that's sort of working. Um, all right. What else do we want to do? Ah, hey, Joseph. How's it going? And <laughs> no, Jaden, you don't have to be silent. So good. Ask as many questions as you want. <laughs> I'm only staring up because you're because you're telling me to toggle X remote. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So just having to think about what's next. Let's make sort of another piece now. Um, sometimes even with a door, like I will find that some of this stuff does get a bit overwhelming when you're kind of like designing it in the scene. So what I'm gonna do for this next bit is, I'm just gonna like design it kind of over here. So a lot of times I'll just make this plane come out like way bigger. Um, and you know what, let's just save as just quickly, just in case I'll save this somewhere later. All right, also, hey, one pro tip, right? Um, whenever you're saving or before you save whatever, just always go file external data automatically pack into blend. So um, what that means is if you have like textures and HDRIs and things that you are bringing in from elsewhere, if you go and take that onto any other computer or anything, it will just automatically load those textures in. So currently if I open this, if I'm on like a computer and then I take it onto my laptop and open up this scene, because I don't have this HDRI on my laptop, it will just go pink right and you and you won't have that in there but that's how you get so external data automatically pack into blend it'll make your files bigger but it means everything's saved in there so you don't have to relink everything which can take some time and it's kind of a bit painful so um yeah uh let's also go alt h just no hang on sorry alt h wrong keys all right there we go let's look in the camera how that's looking zoom it out sweet um yeah and you know, maybe later in some of the following streams, you know, I can show you guys how to do some organic stuff as well, because that's super fun too. But we are mostly just gonna stick with this for the for the time being. But yeah, Joseph, if you want to make some go, you know, give it a go. Joseph, try and make some stuff in uh with, with some more organic kind of things. All right, so let's make this other sort of D shape thing I've got that's that I'm gonna use as like a pattern on a lot of my walls. Um so let's come over here. Shift right click to get my little gizmo over here. Shift A, mesh, cube. All right, and then we just want a cube. And yeah, I like to sometimes just design some of these things just off to the side because then it's kind of like in Photoshop where I feel like if I'm drawing a perspective, I'm sometimes not thinking of the design as much as the drawing. And the same thing in 3D. Like sometimes I'm just thinking about 3D stuff, not really focusing on like, how do I make a good design of this? But I do have this already drawn out, so it makes it sort of a bit easier. But yeah, I do find it just a little bit easier to kind of work with, right? Um, so let's try and make this shape and we might do some some naughty stuff to get this shape. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to hit one on the keyboard. Oh, what did I just do? Not do that. <laughs> Sorry, just doing silly things. 
I think it's just flipped around the other way. All right. So just going to hit no. <laughs> just press that again. Uh oh. I just hid all of this. Okay. Sorry, guys. Let's go in here. All right. Let's sort this out. Let's <laughs> hit tab. Let's hit one on the keyboard. All right. And then what I'm going to do is what am I going to do? Um, let's just go control R and add an edge loop in here. Let's grab these ones. Move that out. All right. Now this needs to go over here. Grab those. Scale that. I want to have that more like this. Let's grab all of those. Grab that. That can sort of, oops, undo. Move that over here. So yeah, just try and get the shape. Let's tab into the tab out of that. I shouldn't have tabbed out really. Let's tab back in. Um, hit Number three, hit L. All right, control B. We can bevel. I don't want too crazy. Yeah, let's do something like that. Okay, that's good. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to like kind of bully in this. Now, it's a bit of a 3D no no. <laughs> All right. But um, certainly for doing kind of like concept modeling and stuff, it's pretty cool, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, Shift D, Escape, and then go S. Uh, no, it's this way. I want to make it smaller, but then I also want to make it pop out like that, right? Sorry, I shouldn't have done that hidden behind geometry. All I was doing was it started out like that and I just made it go out like this. Right, so that basically we can. What I want to do is cut a hole in the middle of this. All right, let's come back to this mode. Let's hit G, and G will let you move things around. All right, it's really cool, and just kind of get it so it's sort of like in the middle. Just scale this around a little bit. Trying to get that to feel to feel good there. All right. <clears throat> so boolean. <laughs> Let's select this one first. So I want to cut the shape out of this one. All right. I'm going to go to the modifier tab. This one here. I'm going to go boolean. Then what I'm going to do is I want to select this one here. All right. And I want to have it as difference. Right. You can have it as intersect. Sorry. You can have it as union, so it joins them together, or you can have it as difference. When I have it as difference, you can't quite see what's happening, right? But then what I want to do here is you can either like click this little triangle here to go apply, or you can um, hover over this and go control A, right? And control A will apply that. So I'll undo it. All right, same as doing the little triangle, apply. All right, and that'll apply that balloon. So now if I go back to this object and move it out the way, Yay, we've got a hole <laughs> right through our little uh, shape here, which is which is very cool. Um, so now let's keep sort of like designing on this a bit. So um, I'm just going to click in here. Uh, Shift A, mesh, cube. Scale that down. All right, I want to grab this face here, tab in, hit number three, do a little scale, down like that, and sort of like that, oop. Oh, I know that's not going to work, what am I doing? just need to move that. Move more that way. Let's 
try and get that shape working the way I want it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go hit I. And I basically insets, so it kind of like makes this edge loop sort of uniformly go in, right? And then I can go E, drag that all the way through. I don't want to go through the other side, but just somewhere in there. All right, so that's pretty cool. Let's like make this some, um, oops, go to the material, new material, you know, sort of make it a sort of darker brownie metal, maybe something like that. Um, so metal, let's make it more metallic. Let's make the spec highest and the roughness down a little bit. All right, and then this one here, we just click on this one, hold down shift, click on the item with the material that I want to link it to. Control L, link those materials. All right, and then they'll be the same material. So that's pretty cool. All right, so sweet. Let's go back in here, tab into this, hit L, Control B. Let's do some bevels there. All right, just so it looks sort of a bit more rounded like everything else I've got here, which is really good. Um, all right, let's do like some little triangular shape things. So uh, let's use this again. So let's go um, Shift D, Escape. And we're going to use these for like some really small little sort of uh, details here. Shift D, escape. All right, I'm gonna rotate that around. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna rotate it, hit R, and then 45. No, uh, let's go R minus 45. Hit enter, G, and then I've got that at like a 45 degree there. So move this out. Just so it sticks a tiny bit out. I, I really see when um, when um, students are doing things uh, and adding in these sort of details, a lot of times what they do is like kind of stick them out too far, right? They kind of have it extrude out a long way. I want to get this one working here, but just keep some of these details like nice and subtle, right? When you're extruding edges out, or adding kind of details over the top, you can keep it pretty subtle, right? Yeah, you don't have to go too crazy with that. So I'm gonna make this one. Let's like link this material. So click on that one, click on the material I wanna link it to, Control L, link those materials. But with this one, I wanna unlink it here. I linked it, so all I had to do was just make it a slightly darker version. It's the same thing. It's got all the other same material properties. I'm just making that look like a little bit darker there. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to grab that one. Sorry, this one, that one, link those materials. You got to do it in the right order, right? So you got to pick the one that doesn't have the material on it with the one you want to link second, and then you can link those materials. All right, so um, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Um, Shift D, escape, rotate 180. No, that's not right. But whatever, <laughs> it'll do. We're gonna use this. We'll use it somewhere else as well. Uh, so, rotate minus forty-five. No, escape. Rotate minus ninety. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Okay, and then Shift D, escape. G. We're just gonna move this up here, and then we're gonna rotate ninety. Uh, okay, rotate forty-five. Use our amazing math skills. <laughs> All right, pretty cool. And you see, like when I'm kind of not inside my, uh, I feel like when I'm not inside my scene, I get less stressed out and actually focus a bit more on kind of designing these pieces up. If I, if I'm like inside my scene, I kind of get a bit like anxious about like, oh, I just I've done these things and it's done, but I really want to push these details and make this stuff like as cool as possible. Um, so um yeah let's just sort of keep keep working at it um i'm just gonna grab it no mm. let's go shift a mesh cube tab in control b 
just like bevel this cube how about s and and you can get pretty quick at this stuff after a while I'm gonna grab that one, click on this one, control L, link that material. All right, and then we go shift D, escape. Actually, you know what this one, uh, undo, undo, undo. Uh, and control L, uh, link material. I'm gonna go Alt D, Alt D, escape. Alt D, escape. Alt D, escape. Yep, and just starting to like layer up these kind of details here. Alt D, escape. Okay, um, so that's cool. And then I might even, maybe I can grab one of these. Shift D, escape, come back to the front. Rotate 90. Oops. G. Move that along there. Shift D. Escape. Oh, probably should have updated that anyway. Oops. Not too stressed about what's in here because, um, we're probably not going to see much of that. <laughs> All right. Alt D, escape. So this is what I call adding those secondary and tertiary details, right? Now, what else could we do? Let's like kind of add some sort of like material indentations and stuff, which is, which is cool. This stuff kind of happens a lot. So I'm going to grab this. Um, shift D, escape, move this over here, come to the front mode, R, 90, alright, now, move this down like this, move this over, alright, what I want to do is I'm going to boolean this out. So I just want this to be like a bit of an indentation in here. So once again, I, I want to keep this really nice and subtle. So it feels like it's kind of pressed metal. Maybe in there. All right, so I'm going to click on this one. This is the shape I want to boolean this out of. And I'm going to go to my modifier tab, go to boolean, color pick this one. <laughs> I just think it would color pick for some reason. And then I basically just go apply. All right, and grab this guy here and move it out the way. All right, and it's just going to create that nice indentation there, right? Which is pretty cool. I might even do that with these ones here. So rather than have them sticking out, it might be cool if these were all going inwards. All right, so what I can do is just move all these out. And I'll show you like another way to kind of do this. Just so it clips in a little bit, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click all of these. Okay. And then I'm going to go control J and that's going to join all three of those together. So when I select them, all three of them are selected. So then I only have to do this boolean once, right? And another pro tip is like always apply the booleans that you do because if you leave them stacked in the modifier kind of tab here it, that can break your computer because <laughs> it starts creating like geometry the computer doesn't like sometimes so um yeah and uh, once again for you guys that are pros in here <laughs> you can use box cutter and all this type of stuff so like box cutter is like a plugin that you can get that's really good with kind of like boolean and booleaning and doing cool stuff cool cuts to things and, and things like that but once again just showing you guys like the really kind of simple way you can do it just without having any of those add-ons or anything so we're going to click on our original um, piece of geometry 
we are going to yeah there's quick shape as well like the the stuff from jama awesome there's yeah there's quite a bit of stuff you can use now which is very cool um yeah uh so and then we're going to click on bullion and we're going to select this one and we're just going to go Control a right and that should cut out all three of those at the same time so if i move this out the road hey there we go pretty cool so now we've got this this sort of shape happening which is yeah looking like some nice kind of sci-fi metal stuff going on so what i'm going to do here is let's kind of do the same thing so um i'm gonna go shift d escape so i've got another version of that i'm gonna rotate 90. all right and i'm gonna shrink it in a bit all right and we've got that now i'm gonna make sure that's just cutting in ever so slightly yep which is doing that's great okay so let's go back here all right let's go shift d escape let's go on down here as well all right um let's grab this one and go shift d escape and just rotate g for move rotate doing a few shortcuts said i wasn't going to dinner <laughs> sorry all right now what i want to do is i want to like scale this so it scales along the right axis so at the moment if i scale it i can't it's going to like go all skewed right so what you do is come up here and you go uh, orientation, local. And then they'll let me scale along the local there, which is really cool, right? So now we can do this, we can do this. Just rotate that a little bit more just so it's as straight as possible. Let's maybe get this to just kind of get a good flow between these ones. All right uh shift d escape control m and then what was it z all right so just mirroring that go there i can just go up a little bit more there it's pretty cool and then let's do some other sort of funky ones so actually we'll just do it with these first so let's do this so select that one that one that one that one control J okay. join them all together all right let's go back to here Orlean color pick that object and then control a and then hopefully that cut all of those out yeah cool that's looking good so we're getting some really nice kind of shapes now which is which is cool um all right let's um let's do this so i want to grab one of these so what do you do when you're like you've joined these together right and now they sort of like they're all joined i can't select just one of them so what you can do is move this over here all right tab into this hover over the the objects and hit p p for pineapple don't ask me why it's separate but p for pineapple <laughs> and then buy loose parts and if i tab back out right now these are their own thing again okay now if you come up here and see how the origin's still set to this weird place down here just select them all like that oops hang on that's going to select the ground as well select them all like this right click um set origin center of mass volume and that will basically like make them all go back to the center point right so we can kind of move them around which is which is super cool so i'm going to grab this one here shift d escape I always like to leave the little bits off to the side in case I need them for something other. So um, I am going to rotate. Oh, let's shrink this down. Uh, maybe they're actually 90 degrees. I was going to have them at other angles, but maybe they are just 90 degrees. So I'm thinking these little, little bits that kind of stick out potentially. So let's push, push it in. Shift D, escape. Let's go to the front mode. Rotate. 90. S. G. Let's line that up. I think that'd be nicer there. D. 
just make sure it's just sitting out of the surface a bit. All right, let's join those together. Together, Control J, that will join them. Shift D, Escape, Control M, Z, loop it along the Z. All right. And see, I didn't put that one in the middle. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, it doesn't all have to be in the middle. It's fine. Cool. But now we're getting some nice little other little sci-fi detail bits and pieces, which is great. Let's grab this one. Shift D, escape. Uh, oh, let's make it scale it this way and then scale it in something like that and then um, let's make it smaller I just want to cut out of this a little bit as well let's go to the front rotate 180. Oops, make sure I move that in the right spot. Make sure it cuts in a bit. Same thing. Click on that one. Boolean. Color pick it. <laughs> Control A. And then move it out the road and we get a balloon. Oh no, I <laughs> did too far. <laughs> so undo, undo, undo. Let's go back to where the modifier is. And let's just move this out a bit. Go back to this one. Control A. All right. And then that's just done that balloon. Oh, still too far. <laughs> Might not be able to get this. Control A. Oops. Gonna do it over the over the actual bullion, right? Control A. Move it across. So close. <laughs> what we could also do is just take that. Just go out. One more. <laughs> One more pixel. And just see how you can kind of like layer all of these things up. So this is just like a little panel that fits in the wall, but you can really play around with, with this stuff which is awesome. Now, why didn't that one work down there? Shift D, escape. Should have worked. All right. Add modifier, boolean, color pick, that one, control A. Move out of the way. <laughs> Just doesn't want to bully in that bit. Uh, there's always something. It's all good. We can we could kind of mirror the whole thing later if we need to. <laughs> but yeah, hope that sort of gives you an idea of how you can kind of um of how you can kind of layer up these shapes and stuff, which is very cool. So once I've got this right, what I do here is select something on this area right. If I just select this and then kind of select around here and go to like join stuff, it'll like see active object is not a selected mesh. It kind of freaks out. So what you need to do is click on what you want to join together, then select them all, right? Then go control J and we'll join all that together. I do this stuff all the time, right? It's super good. So now this is literally just like one thing, right? And I can always remember, I can always, um, if I want to, I tab in. All right, and I hit P and I go loose parts and they'll separate everything out again, right? Which is which is also really cool too. Um, so let's tab out, but we've just got this as one thing. Shift, uh, we might do Alt D, Alt D, escape. And then it's just the instance of that one. Let's move this back into our scene. All right, and then we can start kind of moving it around and designing with it.
Cool, no problems, Jaden. See you around anytime. All right. Um, so I'm going to play around with this. So I want one over here. And then let's go Alt D, Escape, Control M, X. All right, put one over this side that's like mirrored. And then I just need to select both of them and just get them in the right spot. <laughs> which is now very hard to see because we have a wall in the way. So it's here and it's here. All right, and yeah, I want these to be kind of paneling details like this. Oops. So we might need to move them out. Well, actually what I might do is just shrink them down a bit scale them down like that and then move them out there we go and then we've got our little side you know bar kind of coming through there right so we're in a pretty good spot here i'm not sure what i'm not sure is going how that's all going to fit together but that will do its thing so uh let's also just quickly grab this uh let's go alt d escape uh, let's go to the top really quick. Go uh, 90. Let's move that. Oh. Ah. Bring everything back. Sorry, I'm just trying to hide. Just trying to hide the roofs there. Because <laughs> I'm like, where did this one go? <laughs> So that needs to go over there somewhere. I think this would be cool as well. Let's go Alt D Escape. Got one of those. And then Alt Alt D Escape. Got one of those. And we want to control M on the Y. Flip that. I have one of those there. Oops. And oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we've got a wall here in the way again. All right. Move that over there. And then let's grab both of these. <laughs> Keep having stuff in the way. Grab both of those. Scale them down a bit just so they fit inside. Hide. Hide. <laughs> All right. Just so they fit inside. Oops, it's better. Okay, so let's grab that one. Let's grab that. Let's grab that. Will that let me join it? Let's see. Control J. Oh, it will. Okay. And then let's right click set origin, center of the mass. Did that work? No, because it's like doing. Uh... <laughs> let's undo that. <laughs> it's it's because I'm like. It's because this is a. It is I'm joining it and it is a duplicate of the other ones, right? So I can actually how do we cube Try remember how I unlink this. Mm, whatever, it doesn't matter for now. We'll just we'll just do it like this. Okay, let's just go Alt D Escape. Grab one over here. Like there. That one, that one. Alt D, escape. One over here. 
Alt D, Escape, one over here. Yeah, and, and once you kind of build up these pieces, it's actually pretty quick to start putting together some pretty complicated scenes. Which is very cool. So go back in here, and then we can Alt H, Alt H, unhide everything. Yeah, and obviously we can we'll get them on this side and stuff, but yeah, you sort of get where this is direction this is heading. Alright, and then what I'll do is I'll I'll kind of like really layer up the details um with uh the kind of wall panels and things like that, right? Yeah, and we'll get it looking pretty good. But um, yeah, I think that so far, it's a pretty solid little lay-in here. Um, still uh, lots of stuff to go. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, but I think it's off to a good start. And um, yeah, hopefully over the next few weeks, this will really come together. We can get into the details and yeah, I can show you how, how to make this uh, as cool as possible, guys. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, thanks for joining the stream and uh we'll see you this time next week all right bye guys <laughs>